Welcoming everyone, um, pleasure to be here. Uh, so today, today I want to cover some open source, uh, open source chaos engineering tools to facilitate fault injection and implement some uh, chaos engineering principles into our environments. Uh, so simply put, we want to run disciplined chaos ex uh, experiments to identify weak points in our system uh, and fix them before they become problems. So chaos engineering is fundamentally orientated around creating resilience in our applications. Uh, so hopefully these tools can actually help us uh, implement that today. Um, so failure is inevitable, we'll, we'll, we need to be ready for uh, when it occurs. So this manifests really in a chaos engineering perspective in three stages. So first we want to hypothesize, so how can our system fail? Um, we don't want to go around randomly killing things, we want to actually have a control experiment, some metrics we can capture to actually prove that this is occurring, and hypothesize how this will affect the overall system. We then want to uh, contain the blast radius, so we want to test the smaller scope uh, that will give us the maximum value out of the experiment. And then after that, we want to scale or squash. So we want to fix the issue, automate if possible, so we can actually cause continuous chaos, um, and then increase the blast, blast radius until we're at full scale. So first up, we've got KubeMonkey. So KubeMonkey is an implementation of Netflix's Chaos Monkey, uh, but for Kubernetes clusters, uh, which will randomly delete uh, Kubernetes pods in the cluster. Uh, so KubeMonkey uh, works as an opt-in model, so uh, we only terminate uh, scheduled terminations for Kubernetes apps um, that are explicitly uh, stated as such in their deployment YAMLs. So here we've just got an example configuration for KubeMonkey itself. So we um, create a config map just stating what namespaces we want to blacklist and whitelist and some scheduling. And here we've simply just got the KubeMonkey uh, deployments. And then for a, from a victim perspective, uh, we've got a normal deployment and we just add some labels onto there just to say this is a, uh, a victim enabled. Um, then we're just set setting some other data around mean times between failures and what mode we want to kill the application in. Uh, next up we've got Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot. So this is a small uh, library which you can integrate as, an independent, uh, as a dependency in your existing Spring Boot application. It leverages aspect oriented programming so you don't actually have to change any of your source code. Uh, if Spring Boot Chaos Monkey is on your class path and activated with the Chaos Monkey profile name, it will automatically scan your application uh, for components annotated with the Spring Annotations controller, service, uh, repository, that kind of thing. Um, there are three uh, potential attacks we can uh, inject. So there's latency, exceptions, and app killing. Uh, so as we can see here, it's just an extra dependency in our POM, and we have some extra uh, properties in our application properties. And in this scenario, we're just enabling the... Uh, Chaos Monkey, and we're injecting latency onto controllers. So if I just jump over to this. So here we just have a standard uh, Spring Boot application. We also have a controller setup uh, with the right annotation and just creating the hello endpoint. If we drill into the aspect on, on this method, we see here we've just got the standard point cuts for uh, controllers and public methods. We drill further into this and we call Chaos Monkey. And here, we're just picking out the properties from the application properties file we stipulated. So we're just picking out the fact that we enabled latency. If we drill in further, we're just artificially injecting some latency here just through some uh, sleep. Cool. And that's what we just saw. Uh, lastly, we've just got a uh, powerful seal. So again, this is uh, testing the resiliency of the applications in Kubernetes clusters. It comes in two flavors. So we've got interactive, um, so we can literally just run that command there and that'll pop a shell using our uh, kube config. Um, and this will call the cloud APIs and the uh, kube API. So we can stop, start, delete uh, nodes, deployments, pods, that kind of thing. If you want something a bit more automated, uh, we've got autonomous modes. So here we have a policy uh, YAML. So we're just stipulating some uh, matches for the nodes. So what names, IPs, that kind of thing, uh, some scheduling, we only want to sort of course chaos uh, during business hours, for example, and then the actions to take uh, how we want to terminate those nodes. And for similarly for pods, so we've just got uh, some selectors here, so we want to match on namespaces and labels and names. Uh, we can filter further on these in what state they are actually in, and then we've got similar uh, criteria in terms of scheduling and how to kill the applications. Cool. So just to take away from that, um, so as distributed systems have grown much more complex, 
uh, failures have been much more difficult to predict. Um, so we need to be more proactive around how, how we actually learn from our failures. Um, chaos engineering is, is accessible and simple to set up, as we've just seen, with minimal changes to our deployments and our source code. So be a chaos champion in your, your organization. And thanks for listening, and have a great conference. <laughs>